today we will evaluate the capacity of the file plug so that we can determine what is the end bearing capacity we can limit as proposed by randolph we can see he he has integrated the internal uh, you know the the vertical pressure and arrive at the limiting capacity which will be either the frictional capacity plus the weight of the soil or the uh, plug capacity determined here is depending on the soil at the base so that's why not only just because of the type of soil but also depends on the soil within the plug and the frictional resistance within the uh, the pile uh, inside also will determine what amount of uh, end bearing that we can allow so basically that's the starting point from where they started now if you look at a simplified approach when the uh, plug the soil inside is lower than uh, the actual level of soil outside due to several reasons one of the reason is the coarse grained material get densified and you get slightly lower but of course the depth by which it goes down is not substantial sometime you get a plug ratio of 0 0.9 0 0.95 like that it is not going to be completely uh, not there so many times we get a 90% plug ratio means 10% of the the depth inside soil is not there so you can calculate the the plug uh, weight by using density and the height of layers so you can see here one important approach taken by uh, randolph also is to assume a slightly uh, less denser soil a loose soil plug and a densified soil plug so they call it density ratio of the soil plug within the pile plug itself so you can see here the weight of the lower wedge and weight of the upper wedge slightly different because of the different type of density assuming that the soil outside is same but here you got multi layer soil so you need to proportionate uh, proportional to the depth of the soil layers outside and correspondingly reduce the the height so it's a little bit uh, geometric exercise plus the uh, the inner friction capacity basically taken only on the denser soil the friction capacity on the upper soil is ignored because it's anyway loose and uh, it's not going to offer that much uh, basically so that's why you can see the frictional capacity is only taken in the insides and only on the lower soil so when you add up all of them together and that will be the the plug capacity for the the bottom so if you have uh, higher plug capacity because the soil is very good at the bottom does not mean that you can take it because anyway when you have a end bearing of higher capacity the soil plug will start move that means the plug will fail before the pile fails so this is the limiting capacity basically when there is no scour scour i think we will discuss about it uh, in the uh, later part of the course where we will talk about the the causes and type of scour and the, and the nature of scour scour is nothing but removal of soil in the vicinity of the the structures or the pile that you constructed on sea floor basically because of the obstruction the increased flow circulation will remove the particles away and forming a small crater around which is called a scour and it's very very serious when you have a granular type of material it takes away very easily uh, and except if the granular material is heavier then it may not be possible so the scour means the soil is removed in the vicinity in this particular case there is no scour so is the inner plug is smaller than or the height is lower than the outer when you go to the same thing if you look at this picture the soil original soil floor is somewhere here and the soil has been removed because of the scour so that's the difference but otherwise the calculation is same but the inner soil within the soil plug has not been removed because it is contained within the pile so that's the it's just a simple uh, geometry so in here we have to we have to understand two things one is the internal friction the external friction so the internal friction is taken as 80% of the external friction as you can see here the pile the soil within the pile is confined so the development of 100% friction is somewhat questionable so generally we assume lower friction capacity of the internal pile surface to soil to the external surface to soil so normally we take about uh, 80% and you can see here the length of the pile plug which is typically about 90% that means penetration is uh, say lp 90% of that is basically the height of the plug inside so that's the meaning of 0.9 lp is the plug ratio and you can see here the uh, <coughs> the ratio of the denser to uh, loose soil is also around 70 80 typically last 20 30% of the soil is going to be slightly loose unless otherwise any information is given you can by default you can use the values of the numbers i have given here and especially 
this friction though api does not uh, actually differentiate between the internal friction and the external friction uh, you know they give uh, you know the engineers choice to decide a value of internal friction but generally uh, we use 80% so 80% means when you calculate the frictional capacity of the outer surface to soil is 100% the inner surface to soil is 80% because it's well confined and unable to uh, mobilize that much shear between the soil and the pile so that's some information you have to keep in mind which you will not find in the codes codes does not necessarily uh, limit 0.8 uh, they just allow you to use 100 percent. So, the same thing uh, which we can do a calculation for uh, the cover case where the soil in this uh, outer vicinity has been removed exactly same except that the plug ratio to the final form of penetration will be higher because you have to just take into account the cover also because that is the only difference otherwise calculation method is exactly same. And there is no difference. The reason why we do this, I think, hope you have understood, is basically because the pile plug matters in determining the capacity of the end bearing. It is not that only the end bearing is determined only by the soil by which you are actually resting on it. So, that is the thing that you need to remember. Whenever you have a soil here, based on the soil, you calculate the end bearing, very similar to the bearing capacity that we have determined for clay type of soil, we have fused. Um, the lower bound solution for 4 Cu and upper bound solution of uh, 6.28. So, in between you can take a value which will be your uh, bearing value, but if you take that value and find out the capacity limitation based on the plug and whichever is lower you have to use that. So, that is why the limiting plug capacity has to be calculated before uh, you proceed further. The next one uh, is basically uh, uh, computation of ultimate capacity. I think the first, uh, in fact, yesterday we were talking about how the summation of capacity is arising from uh, the skin friction and the end bearing. Two cases we have seen plugged case, unplugged case. Plugged case is basically the full end bearing with the external friction, and unplugged case, internal friction, external friction plus the annular end bearing. So, that is the thing that I have written here. You know, basic uh, idea is compression plugged, compression unplugged. Let us just only look at these two. So, you can see here this is a the external friction and the the end bearing and this is internal friction external friction and the end bearing on the wall of the pile so you have a two cases whichever goes uh, lower automatically you will have to assign as i mentioned you know basically you don't need to do this if you don't need to really do both of them as long as you are able to determine whether the pile is plugged or unplugged if you are able to calculate the the plucking is going to form by means of summation of the weight of the pile plus the internal friction uh, and then compare with uh, uh, the weight of the soil. So, you can determine whether the pile is plugged or not then you do not need to really do this automatically this will govern. So, that is where uh, you know if you are not able to determine whether the pile is plugged or not plugged then you can find out the, the capacities of the external plus the full end bearing internal external and then annular end bearing and uh, whichever comes lower you can assign that means the pile has plugged or not plugged accordingly. For tension capacity is only the skin friction can be taken because the load is applied upwards. So, you cannot take the end bearing. So, in this case external friction multiplied by the surface area of the pile which is A means is the, the surface area of the pile O means whether outside or I means is inside. So, you can just calculate the wall thickness uh, after detecting the wall thickness. For tension unplugged and the only difference you can see here unplugged means you see here the internal friction plus external friction that means you have a friction inside friction outside whereas, when the pile is plugged you only have a the skin friction outside. So, these four cases uh, basically just to calculate the capacity in compression capacity in tension when the pile is applied with the downward load it is compression load is applied against the gravity is basically uh, tension. So, the parameters involved is the surface area internal external and the end area either the annular the steel wall area or the total area depending on whether it is plucking unplucking and F naught and F i which is the skin friction capacity in terms of uh, say unit values. 
per square meter per square feet or per square inch which we need to find out these are geometric values which is not a problem because it's as long as the pile diameter is given you can calculate whereas the f not f i and then the unit end bearing which is very similar to the bearing capacity of cello foundations which we saw the other day so q so these are the three parameters which we require to calculate depending on the type of soil that's what we are going to see today so if you know three parameters then you can find out what is the capacity then accordingly you can decide what is the total capacity available so the first one let's introduce one method simple method for uh, you know cohesive type of soils where the strength is given in terms of untrained uh, shear strength for clay type of soil and uh, it's a fraction of that will be taken as the the frictional resistance uh, or the frictional uh, capacity between the pile and the soil so alpha is basically a dimensionless parameter this alpha and that parameter needs to be calculated depending on what type of uh, soil and where it is located so you can see an empirical formula of this type is given here this alpha is proportional to the overburden pressure so basic idea is psi value is nothing but cu divided by p not p not is nothing but the height of the 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 layer in which you are calculating from the surface of the sea bed so basically multiplied by the density p not is nothing but height times density so is only thing is because untrained uh, condition in underwater we have to take the effective unit weight rather than the total so basic this is just uh, gamma h so as you can see p not will keep on increasing as you go down so if it you if it is on the surface of the soil it's zero because the height is zero as you go down it will increase as p not increases the value differs so there are two criteria given here if the psi value is greater than 1 use this 0.5 and psi value is less than 1 use this limiting value of to the power minus 0.5 so this is the difference that uh, um, we have to adopt so basically whatever you do the calculation alpha value cannot cannot be greater than 1 so that means the frictional resistance can only be as much as the untrained shear strength and not more than that the soil cannot actually give a friction resistance more than the untrained shear strength that's the uh, thing that you need to make sure that remember to limit as soon as you calculate the alpha value you check whether it is less than 1 or greater than 1 if it is greater than 1 limit the value to 1 and value depends on the strength plus your the location of the uh, the the layer from the seabed the more that you go down you can easily understand now for example the clay layer near the surface and clay layer say 100 meters down you could easily see that the 100 meter down the layer is having so much a overburden effect which will allow and will not allow the soil to move away from the pile so that means it you you have to take into account the the effect of overburden which is going to cause the the adhesion of the soil to the pile so that's why i think that a few days back we were talking about overburden pressure is going to be very important parameter in de deciding what is the capacity of pile foundation because is going we are going deeper the deeper you go the soil in the vicinity of the pile is going to help uh, in keeping the soil together with the pile and frictional resistance will definitely increase but there is a limit as you can see here for example if you don't have this limit alpha is less than or equal to 1 this p not is going to keep increasing and uh, you can see here the alpha values as you go down may be more than 1 which is not going to be the case why did they do this is basically to limit uh, and and based on experiments you know several times experiments on uh, frictional resistance have been carried out and uh, basically it cannot be more than the strength of the soil itself even though the the depth of the soil uh, or the depth of the pile is very large like few hundred meters like you know offshore foundations we go as much as 150 meters so that's where uh, this limitation is there so you have to remember to limit this alpha value to less than 1 what it means is untrained shear strength is the limit by which the friction capacity can be mobilized so this is typically called alpha method uh, for only clay type of soil it cannot be used for uh, sandy material so we'll just quickly look at the alternative or in fact before that we can just quickly spend some time on typical values of uh, cu i think we have already seen this uh, table from the uh, uh, the interpretation from spt results It's similar you could see here uh, very low spt is of uh, something around less than 10 
and the value is increasing. So, as long as you can find out alpha typically uh, you know 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 very rare cases you will go into 0 0.8 and 1. So, you will see that the, the, the frictional resistance is in the order of 50 to 60 percent of the C u values you will get uh, reasonably and as long as you can get into a SPT value of greater than 50 you will see that the soil is going to get a good amount of uh, uh, frictional resistance. Just uh, to show you that variation of alpha you know we were this is what we were looking at you know <coughs> the alpha value is going to be limited by 1 even though when you go deeper. So, you can see here three where three different graphs are given one for 5 kPa to 50 kPa 100 kPa 100 kPa is basically the green one you know it took almost 58 meters before it becomes 1 because it is basically the density value is 8 kilo Newton per is a is a submerged density whereas, uh, for um, a slightly increased density you can see here see it, the alpha value becomes 1 slightly earlier and it depends on the strength because that equation if you look at it empirical formula uh, you know psi is the ratio of the C u divided by the uh, overburden pressure. So, you can see here for uh, lower lower <coughs> strength soil like 5 kPa it becomes 1 as early as near the surface. So, that is the so depending on the type of soil where it becomes 1 the limiting value is achieved can be uh, calculated and then accordingly applied. Another chart showing a different uh, in fact, it is the same or different it is different. that is the variation of alpha I think it is the same or it is quadratic. This is linearly varying C u this is basically the constant C u C u is constant throughout the layer whereas, we were seeing that the previous bearing capacity calculation with C u is uh, varying from surface to some depth below. So, you can see here it is just basically a curvilinear versus a linear just because the C u value is constant here and the C u value is changing all the way from the surface to uh, down. The second method which we call it beta method is uh, applicable for uh, uh, you know the sandy material or cohesionless soils and it is a similar uh, idea only thing is the parameters involved is uh, different. You can see here uh, the tan delta, delta is the parameter which we discussed the other day uh, with respect to uh, angle of internal friction is uh, internal uh, failure angle of the material whereas, delta is the angle that actually forms between the foundation and the soil which we call it uh, the friction angle and that needs to be determined it is not exactly same as uh, phi and uh, in the past in several literature you can find some relationship between phi and delta which I have given you a table. So, if you have a phi value of 20 degrees delta is approximately by uh, about 15 degrees many times we take two third or sometimes some literature you will see delta will be phi minus 5 you know like a API course uh, they recommend something like this. But if you look at some of the literature you will find you can take two third of uh, phi value as delta, but in any case when you are using API code they have given you this table nicely. So, you do not need to really uh, do an approximation you can remember is 5 degrees less than the phi value. So, that is something that you can remember. So, you see here the frictional resistance depends on three parameters one is the frictional angle between the pile and the soil and the overburden pressure which is nothing but as you go deeper and deeper this overburden pressure is going to increase and k is the k is the earth pressure coefficient which we I think we calculated active passive earth pressure. So, when you drive the pile inside a, a granular soil the soil is getting squeezed away. So, there will be a uh, soil pressure coming towards. So, basically this coefficient of lateral earth pressure can be calculated as long as you know where is the depth it is the ratio of the horizontal to uh, normal and this because if it is a 100 percent displacement pile it will be more, but in this case is a open ended steel pipe pile when you drive amount of soil displace this very limited. So, that is why we will see lower value will be used. Delta I think not a problem we can calculate 
uh, as per the uh, relationship between phi and uh, um, you know the delta beta is is replaced by the earlier we were having this type of relationship k times p naught into tan delta in the later part of the code they have replaced this value p naught is kept here and then k into tan delta is replaced by a direct parameter called beta which if you go to this table if you look at this if you calculate uh, k times tan delta is this and beta is this value in fact uh, originally the previous version of the code they used to give this uh, delta value and k value and we calculate ourselves instead of that the revised version of the code directly give because one of the reason is uh, people were uh, trying to use or many of the uh, uh, projects got into issues because even though when the delta value is say 20 degrees it's very loose to loose uh, basically the soil is so loose that the material is not going to offer any frictional resistance but because we have a, a phi value and delta value people used to use this for capacity calculation so the new code says if the material is identified as a very loose sandy granular material you can't use it for any uh, strength inclusion so you have to exclude them from calculation that's why specifically for attempting to make sure that the people are misusing the code uh, is, is the values of beta is given but not the k and delta so if you if you we just look at the table two table the previous table and the new table that you can see here uh, specifically the value of beta is given rather than the earlier code we used to have a delta angle and you can calculate yourself and then uh, misuse it the idea is to avoid uh, the use of uh, loose material into foundation capacity calculation so that makes slightly uh, comfortable so you can see here in this table as much as angle of friction is 40 degrees you could achieve uh, a reasonable uh, frictional uh, ratio 56 percent of the ten overburden pressure so overburden pressure more you will be having the frictional resistance higher isn't it but here also we need to have a similar limitation to what we are doing here in here we limited the alpha value to 1 similarly api recommends to limit the total value that you get from beta times p naught to a limiting value so if you go to the table you will see that uh, the new table the limiting soft friction value though you can calculate by using beta times p naught if the value exceeds whatever is specified here you have to limit to the limiting value you need to remember this for example there are two units given one is in uh, kips feet square the second one is in um, kilopascal so you have to use if you are using metric units take the values given in the brackets so that's the limiting value that you have to so after calculating this beta times p naught and you find out whether the value exceeds because you see here a beta times p naught means is basically a linear uh, increase with the depth the more that you go p naught is going to be substantially higher if it is 100 meters p naught will be very large value multiplied by this beta you will see that the frictional resistance is going to be so the, you can ask a question why we are limiting again the similar idea the larger depth does not mean that all the soil is going to offer the overburden effect to squeeze the pile soil interface intact because after certain depth what happens is soil, soil is going to be self-sustaining and it is not going to give you the so much of uh, effect on the, uh, the the frictional resistance that is why uh, you have to limit this after a certain depth you will not be taking into account this limiting value. So basic idea is two methods one is alpha method the other one is beta method alpha method you have alpha times C u beta method is p beta times uh, p naught both of them involve overburden pressure calculation overburden pressure is nothing but height times the density of the soil above suppose you have three layers how do you calculate basically layer 1 times the density plus layer 2 times the density plus the layer 3 times the density will be the overburden pressure at the place where you are so you should know how to calculate and all that the next thing is the end bearing so i think skin friction is very simple after all uh, the, the simple algebraic calculations and uh, easy to find out only thing is you need to remember to limit the values if it is clay you limit the value to alpha equal to 1 if it is sand you have to limit the multiplied value beta times p naught to the code specified limits 
and that limits are given here for different types of material. Medium dense is 67 kPa, very dense 115 kPa. So, if you if you calculate and find that your values are higher, you should limit that. So, that is the idea behind it. The next thing is the bearing at the bottom. Now, you can see and recollect what we derived over the last few classes about the bearing capacity of shallow foundation in clay type of soil when phi is equal to 0. We derived a lower bound as 4 times C u and we derived 6.28 C u when the foundation is at the surface of the seabed, is not it? Not below. When the now, you can imagine this pile is going to be installed 100 meters, 50 meters, 60 meters down into the earth. That means, this over button effect will come. If you go back and recollect the formula for uh, the, the footing bearing capacity is 4 times C u plus Q naught. You know the effect of over button will come. The deeper you go, the bearing capacity is going to substantially increase and that is exactly the idea here. You can see here instead of 4 times C u or 6 times C u, we have 9 times C u because the pile foundations are not going to be definitely installed on the top of the soil, soil surface. No point of installing a pile which is going to touch down the surface only. So, it is going to be several meters deep and the overburden effect will be taken into account. So, that because of that you can see here a increased bearing capacity because we are going to install the pile and the effect of overburden. Instead of directly calculating they have uh, taken as 9 times C u based on several tests. So, that is why the bearing capacity of pile foundation uh, terminated in a clay layer is 9 times C u as an empirical number. We sometimes call it uh, this 9 replaced by N c very similar to our uh, you know Terasaki bearing capacity equation you had C times N c. So, it is here also similar and cohesion less soils similar idea P naught times N q again uh, N q is the bearing capacity factor similar to the bearing capacity factor we were having in. Um, shallow foundations. Only thing is this number will be slightly different, different from the one that you saw a chart indicating the uh, various values of n q, n gamma, n c. So, n bearing capacity is very easy to calculate. This is 9 times C u, no limit as long as C value is uh, larger you can use it, but as we know very well clay means n bearing is going to be very, very, very limited. We saw the values of uh, strength you see here C value is going to be somewhere around even if you hit a very strong clay you are going to hit 400 kPa. 400 kPa is nothing compared to if you look at a granite or a granular material you can get as much as 10,000. So, that is where the difference clay is not going to offer you a bigger capacity, but clay can offer a bigger frictional capacity because the length is more. Whereas, here if you multiply this 400 with uh, whatever the pile surface area at the bottom you will not get any capacity. So, that is why there is no limiting value for bearing capacity of the pile foundation at the terminated at the clay type of layer. So, you can use as much value does not matter. Whereas, when you look at cohesion less soil P naught is going to be substantially larger if you drive the pile to 100 meters and P naught will be very large. Even if you take a typical value of uh, say for example, 100 meter penetration density of soil is say 2 ton per cubic meter. I think typical sandy material will be something like this and because it is under water you get minus 1. So, you get 1 ton per cubic meter. If you take 100 meters times 1 you get nearly 100 ton per square meter is the overburden pressure which is applied surrounding the, the pile material uh, the pile itself multiplied by uh, empirical coefficient depending on uh, you know type of soil you can fal calculate or find out from this table. See basically you can see here n bearing factor given by API very similar to the, the numbers that we look for uh, shallow footing and you can pick up say for example, if it is a very dense sand is 50. So, 50 times 100 ton. So, you can see here the number becomes very large 500, 500 uh, in fact 5000 ton per square meter. So, it is a large value capacity even if you have a pile of 1 square meter you are going to get a huge capacity coming from there and that is why you want to terminate the pile in a sandy material rather than clay material even if you have the best form of clay you are not going to achieve any uh, in bearing capacity. 
So, that is why many times when you are designing a pile, we want to look for where the good material is, whether it is rock or uh, sand of good capacity. You terminate the pile there, you do not even need to worry about the skin friction because the end bearing capacity is going to be surely uh, very high. So, because of that, we need to definitely find out a limiting value. So, the API gives you a, a limiting end bearing value, not simply because you cannot infinitely increase the end bearing. So, if you go for uh, very dense gravel and sand, even after you calculate the end bearing by n q times p naught, you have to limit the value to the value is given here. I think you have, you have to be a little bit careful here also. The value is given here is kips feet square and in bracket is mega Pascal. So, you can see here uh, 12 mega Pascal, which is nothing but uh, you know 12 mega Pascal concrete. You know if you look at a M 30 concrete, what is the capacity or what is the unconfined compressive strength is 30 mega Pascal. So, you can see a 12 mega Pascal means is as good as a lean concrete of somewhere around 10 to 15 mega Pascal. So, it is going to be a good material. So, that is the limit that you have to use for different material like uh, dense, medium or slightly loose to medium you can go as much as 2.9 mega Pascal. So, that is the limiting value. So, you can see this table is very useful you are going to in fact, you have to use this new table you have to use is a similar value. So, basically this is giving you a limiting end bearing value this gives the limiting shaft friction value it also gives you the bearing capacity factor which we need to take and uh, multiply and the friction factor. The only thing is what you have is the density or so called the relative density. Now, you remember uh, when we were doing the uh, first few classes when you are doing the testing the first thing you want to do is the classification. Once you know the right classification like this you will have a several literatures to take out the strength values. So, once the classification is correct and uh, you can go into whether the pure sand or sand with silt or silty sand you can use this table. If you are not falling within this range you will have to find out reasonable um, relationship with other parameters that is when you will actually go into finding out delta value from literature and come back here. Many times you will you will not find a direct classification like this if if you fall outside this for example, you have a uh, instead of silt you may have a clay 50 50 you may not be able to come here because it is not classified under this group. So, you have to go somewhere in the literature find out a equivalent strength form and then come back here either with this value comparison or you can use the old value of delta and calculate. So, you will have to do according to the situation. So, basically the, the four parameters we have now calculated the skin friction for sand clay I think very simple clay and sand you should be able to determine based on which strength parameter is given even if it is not specifically given to you if a phi value is given it is going to be a sandy material if the c value is given it is a clay type of material and you can one of the disadvantage of uh, this api method is when you have a sandy clay c5 soil uh, you will not be able to do this so you will you will find a difficulty you know in uh, assigning um, frictional resistance or end bearing value so you have to see which is predominant you know if you are uh, finding some places in, in uh, you will find sandy clay you know you will you will have a mixture you will have a c value of some some uh, lower amount phi value in such cases you can ignore the the minor component and use it that's one of the weakness of uh, this uh, api method which makes us simplified but then there is little bit uh, complication but if you go into the literature you will find there are several other forms of equations where c phi soil can be represented so, the end bearing is also very simple 9 times C u and n q times p naught and this is limited by the limiting value this is not limited by limiting value whereas, the skin friction both of them are limited and we should know how to approach. This we have discussed just now this is also discussed basically clay no limitation sand is limited by uh, 12 mega Pascal old API table which is no more in existence. So, we will not be will not be giving in uh, any examination or uh, testing we will use this table. So, this numbers you do not need to re really memorize 
uh, in case if it is required for examination point I will print it and give it to you so that you can use it. The next method which is also uh, useful uh, in terms of estimating capacity is the CPT. So, you can see I think uh, CPT gives you a continuous form of uh, resistance as you drive a cone. I think uh, this was introduced uh, during the uh, soil investigation time. CPT is nothing but a cone fitted with instruments like strain cages and load cells. So, when you drive this cone into the soil, the strain cages gives you lot of information skin friction resistance as well as the end bearing and the total load taken to push the, the, the cone into the soil. So, if you can get gather this information and, and it is one of the advantages it is continuously available unlike uh, other forms of testing where you have to excavate the boring stop and do the testing at that particular location and then further bore and do the testing. Here the cone is continuous. So, you will get something like this like a analog signal and if you are able to do a numerical integration of this frictional resistance you will be able to get the capacity very fast. That is why nowadays you know from the field you get the report within few days like if you talk about 20 years back you know they take a sample and then bring it to the laboratory do all the testing they take about few months before you can see any test parameters. Nowadays most of the um, modern um, soil uh, you know investigation uh, companies have these vessels fitted with CPT uh, instruments. As soon as they complete that boring or testing within next days you get the report saying that this is the capacity you can achieve. So, that is one of the greatest advantage of this uh, CPT and especially electronic CPT with all these strain cages uh, you can get the results as soon as just you come out you can get the result because everything is based on computer program as soon as you start driving you will get the information. So, this CPT methods were not recognized because of uh, complexities involved not everybody is able to do it previous uh, versions of the code they only say we leave it to the geotechnical experts to decide depending on the site. But now what they have done in uh, the recent revision of API or other codes in fact ISO codes are the British codes they have uh, uh, included these methods as part of their evaluation procedure and that is why we will uh, go into details one by one because this is very important because many of the new geotechnical reports will provide you with uh, this information. So, you should know how to integrate and which method to use. There were several ideas in fact um, that is why I have given you the five as mentioned by API. API says you can use any one of the method simplified uh, numerical integration or uh, university method or Fugro method these are some private companies. So, they have given slightly modified procedures based on two things one is the method and at the same site you drive the pile and do the testing and compare the capacities. So, they have calibrated these uh, methods uh, basically and several locations and uh, API has given you the complete procedure by four methods. One of the important issue with this when you are doing this integration each one method has used um, adjusting parameter. I think I mentioned about this uh, earlier on you know whenever you do the soil testing and do the piling and do the load cell and test it and compare the results by theoretical calculation using the results obtained from laboratory test or from the cone and from the, the pile testing. If the difference is too large you try to do a correction on your method until your results come closer. So, that is what you see here a lot of um, empirical parameters for adjustment because they have done the testing they have also done the laboratory investigation and finally, they come up with different different uh, numbers. So, each method method 1, 2, 3 you can see here these methods the last one they do not have this uh, data in API. So, you should use whichever the method and ultimately should get a similar result. So, this first one is the simplified ICP so, is Imperial College as early as uh, 2002 they started working on this procedure 2005 they published one paper on uh, OMAE and from then a lot of people were using, but then was not recognized by API, but in the recent revision they have included. And then UWA 
also was as early as 2005 uh, the method was implemented but not much useful but now we can recognize and we can use it all the methods are based on uh, the integration of the resistance measured by the cone in the form of uh, strain gauge readings continuously so you can see the signal is coming in this fashion and you what you need to do is integrate from whatever the depth so if you have analytical uh, uh, analog form of uh, reading then you can do a numerical integrator and then uh, get the values or if you can digitize those values depth wise and do a simple numerical integration also can be done